The amalgamation of plastic attitudes that make up Kamala Harris, a woman who legitimately does not exist. There is no Kamala Harris or Kamala, I don't care because she's not real. Well, I mean, she has skin, she has breath, she's made in the image of God, but long ago, she vacated any and all actual Kamala for whatever she's told to say at any one period of time. Right now, it's that she respects men. Because her husband, as you know, Doug Emhoff, he's a real man. He shows hand to ex-girlfriends, I guess, while they're still dating hands, you know, to slap a woman, just to keep her straight. It's just one slap, as Martha Raddatz might say at ABC News. It's just one slap, just a minor problem, impregnating a nanny and then saying, I need to force you to have an abortion, but just once. As Martha Raddatz might say, it's just once. So now the press is on to convince men the manly thing to do is to stand up and vote for a woman who, from a moral perspective, does not exist. She has the morality of vapor. Put it into a container shaped like the Christian cross. I've always been informed by my Christian faith. <laughs> Turn it upside down for the satanic cross because there's Satanists, you know, working in the White House. Actual express Satanists. That's fine. It's diversity. <laughs> So we'll look at some of the ways that Kamala, 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 I don't care because she doesn't exist, is trying to con men into voting for her, at least the people who are doing that. Now, there's one sure sign that you're a man. It's inarguable. It's the coffee you drink, period, period. There's only one manly coffee. And if you're not drinking it, you're probably a sister. Now, what about wine? Now, see, I don't drink wine. I don't like wine but I like my friend Tim Cruikshank, who's the founder and CEO of Bonefrog Coffee and, and now a maker of wine. So when you think about wine, you probably don't think about Navy SEALs. It's fair enough. But Tim doesn't do anything as an amateur. He put together a team to help him sell the wines. That's me. I can't make wine. I don't drink it. I don't like it. But he put together a team for his vineyard so that he can make sure that the wine is top-notch. Otherwise, he wouldn't put the Bone Frog label on because the Bone Frog label is sacred to Tim. I don't drink wine. I don't like it, but my friends love it. So we had a wine tasting at my house, and I watched nervously as my wine-drinking friends, some of them, they would admit, wine snobs, they do the thing where they pour it around and they swish it and they sniff it before they actually swallow it. They do all that. They tour the world. They go to France. They go to Italy. They go all around the world drinking wine. They loved it. So you can take advantage of the first up opportunity to get the Bone Frog wines in your hands. This has been years in the making. Go to bonefrogsellers.com slash Todd. That's bonefrogsellers.com slash Todd. Get 10% off the wine. And yes, 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 we'll be supporting, of course, the Navy SEAL Foundation. Bonefrogsellers.com slash Todd. Here is some of the ways in which the world of the left is trying to convince men, you got to be manly. You got to vote for Kamala because that's the manly thing to do. It's actually for all men. You know, I think men are in crisis, actually, in this country. Uh, I think that plays out different ways. And not all men uh, are in crisis, of course. And not all men are just at home listening to Joe Rogan, being mm -hmm. angry or being recruited to fascism. Some just need therapy, like we all do. I go to therapy, that's great. But I think we need to have a real conversation about that rather than allowing this kind of drift toward this faux masculinity that we see Donald Trump evincing. So, uh, oh, so has she ever seen Rogan? No, I'm asking a legitimate question. Has that woman ever watched a Joe Rogan episode? And incidentally, men are in crisis. Men my age are increasingly suicidal. Why? Well, they're watching their retirement plans get sucked dry. They're being told that their oppressors as their retirement plans are sucked dry. Government schools are designed for girls, that is, when girls are allowed to not be assaulted in bathrooms, asterisk, not safe for YouTube, to discuss on Substack. Colleges are designed for women. Just look at the percentage of men who are completing college versus women. 
And yet, to this moment, men inhabit most of the most dangerous jobs, even as their retirement plans are being sucked dry, as inflation is quadrupling, as home prices are going up quite by design, you will own nothing and you'll be happy. So yeah, to a degree, men are in crisis. Men like J.D. Vance, who came from a very difficult background with a drug-addicted mom in a very poor portion of the country, who somehow made it out, served our country, and made it into Harvard, and is now a vice presidential candidate. But he's not a real man. Because he's not voting for Kamala Harris, who's married to a real man who shows hand to girlfriends. You know, a good slap here or there, just to keep the chick straight. Or forces a nanny to have an abortion. That's a power differential. That's sexual harassment. But again, it's just one, as Martha Raddatz might say. It's just one nanny. So we hear more about manhood from the Waltz campaign as Kamala Harris has people surrounding her to pretend that she respects and even likes men and even knows what they are. This is Tim Waltz being interviewed by a former NFL football player who actually delivers one of the most decent questions they've asked of Waltz. Um, Former President Trump said something that within your debate uh, with, they were saying that, hey, these are policies that Kamala Harris could have done three years ago when she was in the White House with President Biden, uh, and she never did. What do you say to people who, who bring that up, who say well, that? Well, Donald Trump had four years to do it, if you're going to talk about that. And what the, the point is, you need a partner in Congress. You've seen these, we've seen different bills that are ready to pass, and Donald Trump makes sure he steps in. Um, we saw it around immigration, of uh, a bipartisan bill, widely respected, wanting to make a difference in this holding true to our values, securing the border, Donald Trump steps in and says, look, that's going to hurt my political future. Let's not make it happen. Let's talk about your record. That's pretty manly. Your gal, I mean, that's what Tim Waltz might say, the gals, when he's not slapping them, just keeping some hand. Your gal had four years, and what's the manly response? We take responsibility for that. We didn't adequately lead. We weren't able to push that bill over the top. That's on us. When Kamala Harris is president, she's tough and she'll... No, what does he do? Oh, Trump's mean, man. He's so mean, he's scary and orange. Huge man points there. Incidentally, the bill did nothing to secure the border. It did much more to shovel more money into the money laundering device that is the country of Ukraine it also allowed the increase in illegal immigrants to continue. So there's that. But then again, facts, that's not manly. Don't go peddling facts. Let's get to some anger. So now they came with the topper of all arguments. A bunch of manly men who are voting for Kamala Harris. And I don't body shame. I used to weigh nearly 400 pounds, very close to 400. So I don't body shame, I explain. The first man featured in this is sadly obese. And I I pray for him, that's hard. I'm sure he's a decent man in this Kamala ad, but there's a little detail that they don't put on the screen. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man, man. And I'm man enough. I'm man enough to enjoy a barrel-proof bourbon. Neat. Man enough to cook my steak rare. Man enough to deadlift 500, then braid the shit out of my daughter's hair. You think I'm afraid to rebuild a carburetor? I eat carburetors for breakfast. Why did they give the obese man the line about eating carburetors for breakfast? I, I'm just saying, and incidentally, why is the black dude the one who lifts weights? I'm just saying. Isn't that sort of stereotyping? I ain't afraid of bears. That's what bear hugs are for. I'll tell you another thing I sure as shit am not afraid of. Women. Now, um, the, again, I don't body shame. I explain. Does anyone really believe he's a guy who goes around pointing fingers in people's faces? If you're watching the video of this, just tell me he's a guy who steps to you. I, I'm not feeling it. I'm not afraid of women. I'm not afraid of women. They want to control their bodies? I say go for it. They want to use IVF to start a family? I'm not afraid of families. They want to be childless cat ladies? Have all the cats you want. Woman wants to be president? Well, I hope she has the guts to look me right in the eye and accept my full-throated endorsement. Because I'm man enough to support women. Man enough to know what kind of donuts I like. 
Man enough to admit I'm lost, even when I refuse to ask for directions. Man enough to not ban young women from reading Little Women. Or one of those pants books that the sisters like. I'm man enough to raw dog a flight. It sucked. Not worth it. I'm man enough to be emotional in front of my wife. In front of my kids. In front of my horse. I'm man enough to tell you that I cry at Love Actually. Goodwill Hunting. West Side Story. Those are a lot like my friends. You know, I watched that and I could just identify my friends because we sit around, <laughs> we'll have conversations like this time and time again. Can we take that out later? That was a lie. That never happened. So just remove that from the YouTube video. Let me start again. This is all garbage. They're actors. Nothing says manly like I am endorsing a person for president because it needed my SAG after card. Now I got to one. It's manly. Kamala Harris doesn't respect men, she doesn't disrespect them. Kamala Harris simply doesn't exist.